The average Australian eats 25 whole chickens every year, along with about a quarter of a whole cow and a quarter of a whole pig. Picture this. For each of the increasingly large number of wealthy adults on the planet, we're eating a small farm's worth of animals, around a thousand chickens, 10 pigs, and 10 cows over just 40 years. If you do the maths, it takes a space roughly the size of the Sydney cricket ground just to raise the animals we eat, not even grow the feed for them. I share this not to shame meat eaters, I'm one myself, but to point to something strange hidden in plain sight. Our farm has chickens, cows, pigs. There's about 6,000 species of mammals and another 11,000 species of birds on this planet, and yet we've got chicken, cows, pigs. What's so special about the 0.01% of animals we eat? Your parents, your grandparents, and your great-grandparents all likely ate a lot less meat than you do. But the meat they did eat was far more varied. From boar to rabbit to venison, their dinner plates were full of much smaller quantities and much more variety. The only way we can eat the amount of meat we do today is because we've become crazy efficient at growing just a few species. So efficient that if you add up the weight of all the animals we grow for food, all the cows, the pigs, and the chickens, they outnumber all wild animals and wild birds by 100 times. As each of us around the world get wealthier, we all do exactly the same thing, and that's eat much more meat. This is becoming a really, really big problem. The only way we can produce so much is by cramming lots of animals into small spaces and clearing new land to grow grain to feed them. Meat is third after transportation and energy production when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions, contributing 14.5% of global greenhouse gases and this is only getting worse. For us to survive on this planet, we need to change many things that we do. The way that we produce our food, and especially our meat, is close to the top of that list. But I bet these huge systemic challenges are the furthest thing from your mind as you tuck into your dinner. There's some good news though. We're seeing an explosion of incredibly talented scientists, engineers, and chefs turning their attention to this problem working hard to make new versions of the meat we already eat that can scale with less impact to meet this demand. Walk into any supermarket and you'll find a flourishing section of alternative meats already filled with dozens of options. Some of the largest chains in the world are getting behind this, from Burger King's Impossible Whopper, available at all of its more than 7,000 stores in the US, to McDonald's gradually rolling out its McPlant globally. You can now find alternatives to beef, chicken, and pork almost everywhere. I believe a huge part of the solution is cultured meat. The traditional meat we eat from animals is made of muscle, fat, and connective tissue. Cultured meat is just the practice of culturing those same cells outside of the animal in a factory to produce meat. This isn't sci-fi anymore. It's already available. In Singapore, today, you can buy a humble cultured chicken nugget already. All of these approaches use far less land and a whole lot of electricity. As long as these production systems are fueled by renewable power, they offer a far better alternative to the mass rearing of animals. And rightfully, demand has been exploding, growing by 27% in the US in 2020, reaching 7 billion in sales. Which sounds like really good news, right? Unfortunately, traditional animal meat consumption grew even more, jumping by 19.2%. In dollar terms, traditional meat grew by more than twice the value of all the alternatives combined. Part of the reason for this is alternatives are mostly being adopted and loved by those already conscious and trying to reduce their meat intake, rather than the hardcore carnivores. If you're anything like me, I can't imagine walking up to the counter of McDonald's and asking for a McPlant instead of a Big Mac. We need to go after these carnivores, not just off of vegetarians and McPlant. What if, instead of eating chicken, we could design something meat eaters would love even more? Before everyday products like Coca-Cola and smartphones were everywhere, they are revolutionary and controversial. Tesla make amazing, fast, luxury sports cars, which just happen to be more sustainable. 
they wouldn't have anywhere near the same impact by launching with a small, dinky electric Camry. The same will be true in meat. Just replicating animals we eat today won't create the change we need, especially for the most devout meat eaters. That's why two and a half years ago, we started working to use cultured meat technology to make entirely new types of food. We create a library of cell ingredients by searching through the other 99.99% of animals on this planet we don't regularly eat. We learn how to grow these cells to accentuate the best parts of meat. In this world, every animal can be on the table. Today, animals have to pay a high price to nurture their cells to our liking. Veal's tenderness comes from an animal which has its movement restricted. Foie gras comes from force-feeding geese until their liver is engorged with fat. To create really tasty food, we need to artificially take these animals into an environment which is extremely unnatural. But growing cells outside of the animal gives exquisite control over this environment. From changing the nutrients we feed them to the temperature and conditions we grow them in, we can finally tune the foods they create, all without harming a whole animal in the process. This means we can design entirely new kinds of foods that we won't compare directly to the meats of today. There's good historical precedent for this. Charles Darwin spent many years sailing around the world in his ship, the Beagle, eating every animal he came across and writing detailed reports on how they tasted. Beef, chicken, and pork were nowhere near the top of that list. The last human to eat dodo died about 300 years ago. I'm separated by several generations from anyone who could have experienced such a thing. And I want to try it. Now, we have the chance. Thanks to rapid advances in modern biology, we can even take some of the preserved and reconstructed genetic code to recreate the experience of enjoying dodo as a food. But maybe you don't want to eat an extinct animal. Maybe you just want to get a good night's rest. Have you ever eaten far too much Christmas turkey and found yourself falling asleep on the couch while your family opens presents? That's due to the high levels of L-tryptophan in turkey meat, making you sleepy. We can select some cells which have high levels of L-tryptophan and help you enjoy a really delicious meal, followed by a really good night's sleep. Maybe you don't want a better rest. Maybe you just want really, really tasty food. We can take the best bits of multiple meats, combining the delicious flavor of Wagyu beef with that beautiful mouthfeel of duck fat, with that wonderful caramelization found in pork. We could call it Wagyu pig duck, maybe. We need to work on the name. Our food can become so much more than just replacing the handful of animals we already eat. I am certain the future of meat will be a kaleidoscope of choice with many options for each of us to pick from selfishly because they're more delicious and more desirable than eating animals. You almost certainly have a favorite brand of breakfast cereal, whether that's a bowl full of tiny Oreos you eat with milk or an artisan organic granola, you're able to find something which exactly matches your preferences, lifestyle, and goals. We're right at the start of this same journey in meat. The coming years will see an abstraction away from animals, which means for us as a consumer, an explosion of incredible new experiences and choices. I believe in the coming decades, we will all be eating craft meats featuring cells drawn from across nature, nurtured in just the right environment to craft something you will choose selfishly. Because why on earth would you eat chicken if we've already designed something better?